Hello, my name is Carl Irwin, and uh, this is a, a very quick and short tutorial, hopefully quick and short tutorial, uh, concerning image-based uh, lighting uh, using OpenGL rendering in Blender. Um, I was looking at uh, uh, Andrew Kramer's site recently, uh, videocopilot.net, and uh, on his uh, in his uh, new product Element 3D uh, that uh, that he's created for After Effects Compositor, um, he, he he provided a, a tutorial concerning image-based lighting using that uh, 3D program, that 3D plugin, and um, you, many of you may know that Blender is able to do this uh, already in the Cycles render, uh, where you can apply a uh, 3D, or rather, a I'm sorry, an equal recollect, uh, e equal rec oh my goodness, equal rectangular. There it is, uh, image map to uh, your models, uh, and that will supply the lighting of the scene that you desire without the need for any other lights. Um, it, it just, what it does is it projects the lighting of the scene uh, in, in a 360 angle onto the model. And uh, Element 3D does very much the same thing. If, if you do a few compositing tricks to, uh, to create that. Um, what I'm interested in though is uh, applying the same kind of idea inside of the GLSL uh, uh, rendering uh, viewport in, in, in the GLSL uh, 3D viewport and also using the uh, OpenGL uh, render buttons uh, to get a very similar type result. Now this is not exactly the same thing because you're not able to um, apply an equirectangular image to a model in GLSL. Uh, you're not able to do that. You can do it in the Cycles render engine. Uh, however, that takes quite a while for it to render each frame. Um, you, you're doing full ray trace rendering when you use Cycles. In OpenGL, in the GLSL uh, mode, uh, we're not doing ray traced rendering. We're doing OpenGL rendering. And uh, there is a limitation using that, that kind of uh, image mapping, uh, uh, environment mapping. But there is, a, there is a way to kind of fake it, to uh, uh, emulate that same kind of uh, uh, idea. And we can do this using the uh, reflection uh, mode for the coordinates for our textures in our materials. And if we apply an image material uh, a tech, uh, rather a texture in a material as a reflection we can sort of do the same kind of thing so let's take a quick look here at uh, what we have there is a um, a scene set up and there I have a, I have my uh, mode set to uh, GLSL so you want to go to display and turn on GLSL shading and uh, you can see here I've got an image in the background and this is just an image of a, a city street uh, you can see that here's the image right here and then I have a, a Suzanne a monkey head in front of that and, and if I turn off if I turn off the materials here you can see what's going on uh, we have just a white diffuse material uh, and it's set to emit so there really is no shadow, there's no shading uh, going on here, there are no lights in the scene, it's just emitting. Uh, and you might be wondering where all the shadow is coming from. Um, that is coming from uh, a node-based material, and you can see on in our material we have it set to use nodes. And uh, what I've done is I've UV unwrapped uh, Suzanne, and you can do that very easily if you just tab into edit mode and go to uh, unwrap and if you select smart UV project it will do a, a quick unwrap uh, of your model and uh, from there we can go to vector paint mode and if we click on paint and we click on uh, dirty vertex colors it will create kind of this uh, fake ambient occlusion it finds 
the cracks and crevices in your model, the areas where uh, uh, there are kind of apex points where uh, the model converges on itself, and it will create uh, this, this kind of fake shading. It's a texture, a painted texture, and it automatically creates that. And if you uh, uh, use nodes for your material, you can add a geometry node, click under here to input, click on geometry, and apply the vertex color to a mix node. Uh, and if you want to see what that looks like, uh, just that color looks just like this, just as you see here where there's black kind of in the crevices and white outside. You apply that as the factor to a mix node and uh, the top color is black for the shadow and the bottom color is your input from your materials okay from the uh, material that you're inputting that uses these reflections and what it will do is it will apply this material in all the white areas and then it will apply the black in the shaded areas and you end up with kind of a fake ambient occlusion so that's kind of a little bonus trick that you can use uh, on an open GL is you can create kind of a fake ambient occlusion on models uh, without having to use lights and and use uh, ray traced uh, ambient occlusion uh, as you would in the internal render or in cycles. Um, back to the textures, however. Uh, the top texture that we have here is the exact same image as this background, however, it's been blurred by several hundred pixels, both X and Y. So you can just load this image into GIMP uh, or Photoshop and add a Gaussian blur or a, just a, a quick blur. Uh, to get this diffused kind of looking material and the idea is that it's all the same uh, luminance as the background but it's a very very graduated and soft version of that and and that is makes for a very good diffused uh, texture and if we apply this as a reflection you can see down here it's set to reflection and uh, you can change this color if you want it to be uh, if you want the color of your model to be only uh, the diffuse texture you can set the color uh, uh, influence to 1 uh, I set it to 0.8 so it wouldn't be quite as harsh uh, and if you set this even lower and if on your model you set the color to another color uh, it will uh, also influence the color of your model, so that's something you can do as well. Um, but if you apply this as a reflection, what it does is it, it sort of cheats and it makes it appear as though the color system within the scene, the virtual location that the uh, model exists in, is affecting it in terms of lighting when really there are no lights in the scene at all. So this is just a, uh, a, a material that is emitting and uh, with this this texture mapped to it as a reflective texture we get the appearance of lighting that doesn't exist. Now is it is it um, accurate? No. It's not accurate at all. But it, it's pretty passable because it's using the same color scheme as we see in the uh, scene. Now there's a big problem with using this. If you, if you notice as we move in, if the camera's going to move around Suzanne, you can see that that texture follows the camera and that's not really very accurate. Now would that be noticed uh, in a scene? Maybe not, but it isn't accurate. And in fact, if you look, if we go underneath, the very underside, we're seeing reflection of sky here, and that, that would not be possible uh, in reality. Uh, what you should see underneath is a reflection. Uh, you should see shadow and reflection of the ground only. And that's what you would get with a uh, 360 equi equirectangular um, uh, image map. Uh, we don't get that with this reflection. Um, but it, it, it still is pretty useful, pretty powerful, and, and I think it would go unnoticed in most circumstances. Now, on top of that, we can add another instance of, uh, of the same texture, uh, and we have it here. Let me turn it on. And this is the uh, specular uh, texture, and what we do is we take that same image and we change the contrast in a photo editor. 
uh, and we can make sure that the luminance is still essentially the same for the bright parts, but we add a slight blur and change the uh, uh, contrast so that the lighter parts stand out or higher contrast. And we load this texture as a reflection, and we set this texture to add. So what it will do is it will add um, only those bright spots to the model on top of our texture. And what it does is it creates kind of a shiny uh, looking, uh, um, what looks like specular highlights, even though they're not. Remember, there are no lights in the scene. These are just textures. So it kind of makes it appear as though uh, there is there are I objects or an environment that's affecting uh, the lighting on this object. So that mixed together with our fake ambient occlusion from the vector paint uh, uh, gives us a pretty convincing effect and uh, again from, from the camera view and if we hit our uh, OpenGL render you can see this is the this is what it looks like in the final. Now you can of course change these settings by by messing around with the material. You can also add some nodes in the uh, node editor uh, to change the contrast and the lighting and change the color and, and do all kinds of interesting things there but this is kind of a quick and dirty way to um, get a pretty believable uh, environment lighting on an object. Um, now this is only using a still picture so the question is is can we apply this let's say in a video if we had a, a moving camera video and we had an object in a scene could we do the same thing and and I think that yes you can you can do the same thing so here's another uh, this is Suzanne this is my uh, backyard and this is just a really quick uh, video that I took of my backyard using like just a flip camera so it's a very amateurish video but you can see that uh, Suzanne is in this 3D environment again this is just an OpenGL render quick composite it didn't uh, put a lot of time into it but you can see that um, uh, the lighting that is affecting Suzanne is actually created from the video itself and uh, what you do is you can apply the video uh, as the texture in much the same way. So as the camera moves, and again this is a track, and, and I have to say, just as an, a, a side note, I am very impressed with uh, Blender's tracking features and how they have developed in just the last uh, past year, uh, particularly with the uh, Mango project. They've done a lot of really great work in uh, advancing the tracking uh, software in Blender. Um, it's quite powerful and uh, maybe I'll do a tutorial on that later on uh, just a follow up to some older tutorials that were a little bit more uh, complex and complicated uh, uh, the tracking features now are to the point where you can use some of the more automatic features and get really really good tracks if you if you're careful with it and uh, I'm, I'm very very impressed I actually tried this first in Voodoo uh, some of you may have used may use Voodoo, uh, and uh, it it didn't work nearly as well as the Blender. It didn't work nearly as quickly either as the uh, Blender tracking uh, um, part of the program, and I'm I'm quite impressed with it. But anyway, um, this is just a track of the video, and uh, if I open up that blend file here, you can see what's going on. So here's our track, and if I turn on the background, you can see here's the video in the background and uh, our track follows the video pretty well. Uh, let me turn that off. Now for uh, Suzanne, once I set uh, Suzanne in place, uh, and there's a couple of other textures on here too. There's a, uh, a, a seamless rock texture that I applied uh, first before I applied the environment uh, lighting textures. Uh, and if you look at the um, material here you can see that. Uh, here's the rock texture, and again, it's a seamless texture, so I had to UV unwrap Suzanne, and I did the same uh, process, just a, a quick, uh, easy UV unwrap. And I applied this texture, and I used the geometry to get uh, these uh, crevices in there. So I applied the uh, uh, geometry influence uh, to change that, 0.5. And I also applied the color, so this was going to influence the color first. Then on top of that I placed another texture and this texture is the video. It's actually the video texture and if, uh, if we take a look here uh, you can see, let me close this out, uh, I have the uh, video texture here so this is the, uh, let me find it, 
So this is the same video, but you can see it's moving around. It's blurred. So I, I quickly ran this through the compositor and blender and made a version of the video that was blurred by several hundred pixels. Just put a quick a fast Gaussian blur, uh, cranked it out just a, you know, a second or two per frame and made a quick version of the video that I could apply as a diffuse texture. And then I did the same thing again for the specular. So this is the same video again. Uh, set with a high contrast and a very light blur that I could use for these specular highlights. Now, <clears throat> the question you may have is why would I need to use the video? Why couldn't I just use a, a plain image uh, on just the still frame for the uh, environment lighting? And uh, the answer is that the camera is moving. And remember, because the camera is moving, as the camera moves, when you use a still picture as a reflection, that picture moves with the camera. So by applying the video as the texture, by using a video uh, uh, input rather than the uh, image, still image, you can see here's my backyard diffuse AVI, um, as the diffuse texture moves, it moves in concert with the track. So we don't notice that uh, the texture is stationary because it doesn't appear to be. It's actually moving and it's moving exactly in line with the track. So it, it, it's a pretty convincing trick uh, to apply the background video as the environment. Now again, is it authentic? No, not at all because what you're looking at is reflection of what's happening in the background. So this will not always work, but it's convincing enough because it is the same color scheme applied as the reflective pattern and and that's pretty effective I think it's close enough it gets you uh, um, to where you need to be so here we'll turn on the only render so you can see uh, what Suzanne looks like and actually uh, one more thing I want to point out you see that there's a shadow there um, to get this shadow what I did is I created a uh, I, I, I put a Suzanne monkey head in uh, a separate blender file from a top view and I uh, created one image from the top of a black Suzanne head shadeless and then I opened that in GIMP and I blurred it to create a um, this shadow and then I placed the shadow underneath Suzanne and uh, that composites well. Now alpha transparency does not work very well in uh, OpenGL rendering, or rather in GLSL mode, but if you only have one image and it's being composited onto something else, uh, uh, you know, in the video sequence editor or against other scene layers, uh, that works out fine. Now, if you have multiple images that have alpha transparency, you run into problems, especially when you have this gradient, more than one bit alpha transparency. But in this case, it works out pretty good. So this is kind of a cheap trick to get that uh, uh, shadow underneath. Now, <clears throat> one thing I will point out is that if you remember in the other example, uh, we're unable to get shadow underneath, and, and because the uh, Suzanne is kind of floating in space here, we can get away with that because there's just kind of ambient light around Suzanne. Now, if Suzanne was sitting on the ground, we'd have a problem because we need to have more shadow underneath and we would need to have shadow against the ground. Now, what, what I did is I did apply one lamp, only one point above, way above the scene here, and that uh, uh, creates the shadow underneath on the model. So on our material, instead of setting it to emit uh, one, I set it to emit 0 .05. So it is still emitting uh, the color, it's still emitting uh, the environment with the specular highlights and everything. Um, but to get the shadow uh, on top of that emission I have uh, this point just to give us the shadow underneath so there are still a few tricks like that that are necessary if you're going to uh, need to have shadows underneath now if your scene was very bright on top your video and dark on the bottom you probably could get away with this uh, without having to use the light because the reflection would automatically be reflecting uh, dark on the bottom edge. So uh, that's another thing to think about is the, the type of video that you're using in the background. Um, if I had 
Suzanne, let me go back to my background just as a reference. If I had Suzanne hanging from this tree back here and she was suspended, uh, we wouldn't need to do that because the ambient light, the color of the ground would be affecting the lighting underneath. Um, but because Suzanne is close to the ground, uh, this, this light was necessary. But anyway, this is a pretty quick way to get some pretty convincing results. Now, um, if you saw, I have another, a, another tutorial on my YouTube channel concerning uh, GL rendering and getting motion blur. And, and I've, I've made some improvements to that, uh, or rather some more discoveries. And if you look here, I'll go to the video editing, uh, video editor. And actually before before I do that, let me go back because we need to I need to turn off the background here. Turn that off. And on the video editor, what I have here is the the original video underneath in the bottom layer. And then what I did is I just used scenes. So these are just scenes, the scene set to OpenGL preview. And um, you saw, if you look at my other uh, tutorial concerning GLSL rendering and OpenGL rendering, I talk about creating poor man's sampled motion blur. Well, I didn't really do that here. What I did is I just took the video, or the scene, and I offset it by one frame forward and one frame back, and I set the opacity really, really low, and this is set to alpha over, so that on the moments where, because this is really jerky camera movement, on the moments where the camera really jerks, we can get some some kind of essence of motion blur. Now this isn't very good, but it worked well enough in this example. Now, what you can do, I learned, is that you can oversample your output uh, by setting your uh, time remapping. And, and, and if this doesn't make sense, please go look at my other uh, um, uh, tutorial on my YouTube channel concerning OpenGL rendering. But anyway, you can set your, your uh, frame remapping to a higher number here to get over sampling. And what you can do is you can do the offset uh, trick in, in the scene, in, in, the, in the video editor, and then if you add an adjustment layer, and then on top of that add uh, to that adjustment layer, add a transform layer and don't don't change any settings just add the transform layer and then on top of the transform layer you can add a speed control and then change your speed and in one shot you can actually set your poor man's motion blur for one output without having to uh, do multiple renders uh, and, and multiple sequences so um, that's just a little trick that I did discover I'm not doing it right here because I did this really quick but I did learn that you can do that. That does work very well uh, for, for rendering one time using the OpenGL output and getting a sampled motion blur. Uh, and again, it's only a couple seconds per frame. It renders very, very fast with very, very good results. Um, anyway, so here is, uh, here's my scene set up, and on top of this I can do some color correction. I'm very impressed with the color correction uh, um, uh, nodes, or rather the color correction uh, extensions that have been applied uh, to the video sequence editor. They're very, very powerful. Uh, and uh, just by adding an adjustment layer, you can uh, get all of your color correction done. You can do really a lot of compositing in the video sequence editor. It's quite remarkable. Uh, the one thing I wish that they would add is uh, just a blur uh, effect. I wish that we could add, uh, I wish that this list here had uh, a blur uh, a blur effect to it. That would be very nice. It's got a lot of other very powerful things, but the one thing it's missing is blur. That would be very, very useful for a lot of uh, different compositing tricks. I did learn, though, uh, again, as another side note, that you can add the glow uh, effect, and I think it can only go up to 20 pixels of, of glow, but if you add a glow effect and you set it to 20 pixels and set it to... Um, well, let me see here. Let me add one real quick and look at it. Let me see here. If you set the threshold to zero, set the blur, well, to whatever you want, and click on only boost, it will, essens it will essentially uh, just blur the image. So that's kind of an, uh, a cheap way to get a blurring effect. If you ever needed to blur a layer, that's one way you can go about doing it. Add a glow uh, effect 
use only boost, set the threshold to zero, turn your boost factor, I think, up to one, uh, and set it to only boost, and use your blur distance as the blur amount. Uh, you can add multiple instances of that to blur even more than 20. I think 20 is the maximum. But anyway, just a little tip there that you can uh, uh, use. And we'll get rid of that. But anyway, uh, now you can output this video, uh, OpenGL rendering, uh, and, uh, and get a pretty quick render. So this is the whole scene put together with the background, with the compositing, all done in the video sequence editor uh, using the scene output from the uh, 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 3D view set to OpenGL preview, set to texture, and if I click on the uh, button here, OpenGL render, you can see how quickly this renders. That was like one second. One second and I have a full frame render. So that's a, a remarkably quick uh, using the OpenGL capabilities of Blender uh, and also applying kind of a uh, not really an authentic but I think a passable version of uh, uh, the you know Andrew Kramer's idea uh, in OpenGL using uh, uh, an environment as the lighting uh, for your objects so anyway I hope this was useful again I don't uh, proclaim that this is an authentic mode uh, for um, uh, texture based lighting uh, but you know it, it works pretty good it's pretty passable it's a it's a pretty quick trick uh, to get uh, to a very similar result uh, and I think it's uh, I think it's a useful trick to use so uh, hopefully you you feel the same way and you can find some use for this so uh, good luck with this again I'm Carl Irwin and uh, happy blending